morning, folks. Good morning from the beautiful Barrio Barreto. Look at that sky. Folks, it is a hot one today. I ain't gonna lie. Man, it's a hot one. Beautiful weather here. Rain has stopped. Can't complain about it if you like hot weather. If you don't like hot weather, uh, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> I love beautiful hot tropical weather out about this morning let me run a couple errands and then we're on a uh, road trip over to Angeles City to handle some business first I got to get across the street and try to get a tune out of this uh, trombone over here see if I can get across without getting run the hell over yeah you know what we'll check that last thing because well, something ain't broke, don't fix it. Plus, gives me an excuse to walk down here and see what's shaking at the main drag, the main hub of activity here in Barrio Barreto. This is my drink spot right here off to the right side of the aircraft. All you do is pop in there, tell them what you want, they deliver it, or you can text them. They'll bring it right over. A wholesale spot. And folks, you see uh, young ladies, like that young lady, still wearing that grinding helmet outside, walking around, just making them sweat. My goodness, and I believe the president, according to some of y'all's comments, the president said, you ain't got to wear that shit outside no more. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what y'all reported to me. Fucking grinding helmet. Only country in the world to implement that, by the way. Yeah, so uh, we're taking a little road trip today. And I'm not sure if I'll include that footage in this video, but what I thought about doing is just uh, no thank you sir no thank you my friend it's just letting it run like shooting outside the starboard side of the aircraft maybe doing a little narration if i can and just shoot the whole trip 4k 60 frames on the iphone 12 mini for anybody who's interested in details of the route from good old barrio barreto over to Ancales. It'll only be out the starboard side because what I'm gonna do is put this phone, I'm gonna rest it on his mirror, run a microphone in so you don't hear it. Well, you probably still hear the wind noise. Maybe that's the problem. I don't have no audio. I put some good music to it. Folks with the bicycles. Oh, this uh, Tendahine Neat One. Looks like it's almost open. Almost. Good morning, Mr. Rooster. Alright. I'm gonna head it back. Folks, on a day like this, if you're not wearing some type of hat on your head, oh my goodness. Well, luckily, better knock on wood. Luckily, I got a bunch of hair still on my head. It might be going a little gray, but it can go gray as long as it stays. But if you ain't got no hair on your head, you're gonna have a burnt scalp. I promise you on a day like this. You gotta have some type of headgear to keep that sun off your head. Especially all my friends out there. Uh, you know, if you're completely bald, man, your whole head is gonna be scorched. You gotta get some headgear like this. Boom, like this, look at that. Nothing like a little booty hat. Keep this tropical sun off your head. Mostly off your nose, but not all the time. Alright, so I popped in this pharmacy. Thought you might want me to pick her up some Medico. That's what they call Medico over here, which is uh, ibuprofen. But over here they call it Medico. So if your wife tells you, oh, it's actually Medicol, M E D I C O L. So I thought you might just said Medico. 
seven pesos each for those tablets. And those are 200 milligrams ibuprofen. There's a beautiful flag flying here at the RAO, the Retired Activities Office. Folks, you know, I just crossed that, uh, that highway here, National Highway. Some people who just do a hundred mile an hour down this strip. You really got to be careful. Come over here to Barreto. The only real danger you got in Barreto is crossing this damn highway. You know, people who are local, they're, they're not trying to break a speed record. But these assholes that are just coming through doing 100 miles an hour and people are trying to conduct business and cross the road. It's just a wonder more people don't get hit on this highway. And, I mean... Maybe there is, I just don't hear about it. The last one I heard about was over a year ago. Some dude stumbled out of the bar, made it halfway across the National Highway, got launched by a jeepney. According to my bar girlfriends, they saw it. So that fucking jeepney launched the dude. And, I, and they said, as far as they knew, he was still alive. I don't know. I'm just listening to what the bar girls told me. Point is, Come over to Barreto, please use due caution when you're caught crossing this road because people don't give a shit. They just uh, trying to break speed records coming down through here. Good old coffee shop. need to pop into the Barreto Mini Mart to pick up some snacks and chips stuff like that for the kids for the road so let me pop into this spot see if I can't get a little bag of goodies look around the market area kind of busy day here at the market area area in what they call 164 alright folks we are rolling out check out this crew here Lona's Fatima has got a cookie in her mouth. She's happy. Well, any type of food, really. But these babies are chowing down on some chips. And Maria Mercedes and Fatima got some Tahoe from the Tahoe man. Because I'm a good foreign guy. I'm a good foreign guy today. But I don't have a big heart. There's a big difference of being a good foreign guy and having a big heart. Oh, Fatima, I got a fashion mask. Where'd you get those pink masks, baby? Okay, wasting my money on that horse crap. But now, folks, I, I'm going to roll the window down in a little bit, maybe, and shoot out. I was going to shoot out the starboard side of the aircraft, but you know what? This windshield and this, and this van is brand new, so I don't think it's too bad on the view. I may just save everybody from the wind noise. And just shoot out the front of this aircraft here. I just wanted to give you a view of the ride from Barreto through SBMA. And then once I get through SBMA, I'll shut her down until we get into Ankele City. So if you're not into uh, this type of video, up to you. You can choose the next one. But some people are people who are from here people who lived here people who were stationed here they do like to see these types of videos and they go frame by frame to see what's going down all right and I'll get my little thing out of the way so John Paul can see there's looking northbound through Barrio Beretta here on National Highway That's the Arizona. The folks here waiting on the jeepney. And here we go. We're rolling out. A couple of new things up here in Barrio Barreto. We have a new uh, gas station up here on the on the port side of the aircraft. If you haven't been here in a while. There you go. New. I'm going to full up soon. Oh, okay. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna fuel up in the brand new clean fuel. Now open a long po gas station. Look at this, folks. There's some spaces for rent back here. 
If you're looking to try to make a little money, 36.58 square meters and 31.35 square meters. And this is the anchor space for rent, 99.38 square meters. And this place is brand new, just open. So you got 41.90 on the diesel, 52.30 pesos on the clean, 9 or 1, and the premium 9 or 5 is 52.80 pesos. Those are your current fuel prices here. Now bear in mind that's per liter, that is not per gallon. Okay. Uh, once you leave America, the rest of the world's on the metric system. But there you go, per liter. This gas station here is like typical, like you'll see in Thailand, on a smaller scale. You know, in Thailand, the gas stations are built like this on a much bigger scale. You got, uh, you know, clean restrooms. You'll have an anchor store here, and then small shops, food shops. So this is built. I'm not saying that they don't have them here in the Philippines, but I'm saying this just reminds me of the Thai style. Uh, fuel stations. The gas stations in Thailand are really, really nice. A lot of the places you stop at, sort of like this, but on a bigger scale. Okay, folks, we're we're back on the way. Back on the way here. Is that like truck? I don't know. Parking place? Are they dealing in trucks? I don't know. Another river running out to Civic Bay. Off the left side is Our Lady of Lords, but it's closed down. The hospital and there's Savers Appliance Depot. That's where I bought uh, my aircon and uh, our refrigerator. Not too bad of deals in there in Savers. So if you're around here, real friendly people in there, they deliver my stuff the same day. So I'm quite uh, pleased with my experience purchasing stuff at Savers. All right, folks, now I got a different setup here. Got a different setup. Trying to see if I can't get a better angle on the dangle, but I do believe I'm probably blocking John Paul's view. Can you see, man? Can you see out of that mirror? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. As long as you can see, just let me know if I'm messing up your operation. Folks, off. I don't know if you can see it from the iPhone, but that's the beautiful Subic Bay off the starboard side of the aircraft beautiful Subic Bay through them trees right there. All right, so coming down the hill, cemetery off to the port side. And for some reason, you see these jeepneys parking off to the right side here nowadays. I don't know why, because that's not a real good spot for them jeepneys to be parking, to be honest. But they'll line up there you got traffic coming down the hill, so wonder they don't get slammed into. Here's the bus parking area off to the right side with this uh, diagnostic laboratory. I'm not sure how they play into all this, but if you want a good walking tour, go right down right there, and it'll take you out to the old lighthouse. It's a really good walking tour. It's free. You just got to figure out where to park. Best thing to do is just have a trike driver drop you off and wait on you. All right, now we're coming up to the entrance, the Calaclon gate here at SBMA. And I'm going to probably have to put the camera down as soon as we get up there. And this is uh, Dewey Avenue. I'll put the camera down when we get close because they're probably going to question this, you know, especially if they look in the van, see the kids in the van. Just different rules, different horse shit here coming on the SBMA. Shields up, shields down, people. Yeah, babe. Okay, here we go, folks. Here we go. Camera down. Outstanding. They just waved us through. Shout out to them gentlemen right there for not giving us any problems today. All right, so this will begin. And, and folks, I hope the audio is okay. I went back to simplicity. I'm using the headset from my iPhone 8 Plus that I always used to use. There's Bay Point Medical. I'm using this headset from my iPhone 8 Plus that I always used to use, and the audio was fine. 
And then you try to get complicated. That poor dude wearing a damn granite helmet out in this heat. Dude, take that crap off. The president of this country said you ain't got to wear that shit outside. Take that off. Anyhow, simplicity. Using the headset and the microphone from the headset. It always did me good. But then you start buying external mics and expensive cameras. and You get away from simplicity. Shakey's Pizza Parlor. Off to the right side. There's the Blacktail Bar and Restaurant. And, of course, you know, one block over. That's uh, where KTV Bars, Texas Joe's. Um, what's that place right there? Is that called Vapor? I can't remember. Old building here for anybody. Building 251 for anybody who used to be stationed here. What building number we got here? 280. And we're just cruising along, cruising along Dewey Avenue at Espiritu Street. You know what? I'm trying to get complicated with my setup, and I think it's actually making things more complicated. Just go back to handheld. Simplicity, folks. You want to know the secret to YouTube and blogging is simplicity. Unless you're just doing your entire YouTube setup in a studio where things don't change, keep your equipment simple and you'll get more stuff done. The minute you try to get complicated, that's when uh, your productivity goes down in the vlogging game. Basically right now I'm shooting from an iPhone 12 mini with a headset from an 8 plus on just a little, a little uh, bracket and a little handle. And I'm doing much better than trying to get complicated. Buena Casa Hotel, the hub and pub of great food, the Castro, 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 I don't know, and there's a yellow cab pizza, I like yellow cab pizza, I really do, I used to order that a lot, Every time, anytime I blew through Manila, I'd get me some yellow cab, I had to get some yellow cab pizza. Yeah, I've shot this video, this route, many times. Sometimes the narrative is the same. Sometimes I see different things. And you also have to bear in mind, not everybody watches every video. People don't watch every video. This might be the first video you're watching. Building 657, Law Enforcement Department. Over there across the street is the old brig. Burgo Street at Sampson Road. couple little boats up in there all right coming up here to canal road running track off to the port side of the aircraft I've actually seen some folks running on there so it seems to be officially open unless they're yeah there's a dude out there with a broom that's a nice little running track if it's not officially open, I hope I'm not telling on people and getting them in trouble, but I have seen people running around that track. Little substation. Little power substation. And we'll be taking a right turn on to Manila, or excuse me, Rizal Highway in the direction of Manila. two things off to the right side is going to be the uh, yacht club and off to the left is where we took the kids fishing over there at that uh, magic lagoon but since we're shooting out of the port side uh, hold on I don't want to film this law enforcement vehicle you know what I don't care uh, Subic Bay Yacht Club that's the yacht club right there
all them yachts out there from all the rich folks around here. I wonder if there's some good fishing up in there. Maybe this is where I need to come to to go fishing around all these yachts. Coming over this here bridge at 14th Street. It's the 14th Street Bridge. Doing a little road work here, repaving that, at least that little section. Put some new concrete down. Big old bump. Oh man, if you hit that thing at speed, it's gonna get launched. Building 1026 and what is that? 1022, big warehouse buildings over there. Fresh concrete through here. Oh, a little shaky there, changing hands. Over here in this warehouse complex. Building 1034. 1034 right there. It says something years of support, something, something, I don't know. The paint is faded and I can't read it. Ford of Subic. Seven Eleven. Place called what is that? Argies. A R G E E's Grill and Steakhouse on the top deck of the Seven Eleven over there. I'm not sure if it's open. There's a uh, tarp over the sign. The Jolly B. This is Argonaut Highway. Running right in front of us. That'll run over to Malawan Park where we went fishing. Ooh, she got an s &R pizza. Deliciousness. Petron Station. We had a Mickey D's. Pretty big uh, double-decker McDonald's off the port side. Still continuing here. Truck dealership right there looking to get in the trucking business and there's the Toyota place if I were to buy a vehicle that would be my only stop right there at that Toyota place pick up a brand new Land Cruiser for a hundred thousand US now we're coming up to the end of the tour I don't want to say it's a full tour but this is the route that you take just to transit pass through as they call it just to pass through uh, SBMA. That's all you do right here. And once we cut this left, we're basically headed outside of the base. And you'll start, and just see how big this building is right here. You have to look at the timeline. But this is one huge structure. I'm not sure what all they do in this thing. I always thought it was a factory, but it might just be a warehouse. What are they, what are they doing here, John Paul? Uh, it's a factory. Factory of the shoes, bad shoes. Factory of shoes? Yes. Fans. Okay. Fans or shoes? Fans, shoes. Oh, shoes. Okay, okay. So they manufacture Vans shoes in there in that big warehouse looking thing. It's a big factory. This is the warehouse in there. Oh, okay, so that's the warehouse yes, there. Sir. Okay, so we passed the factory, now that's the warehouse, the gray building. So huge, wow, look how big that thing is. I didn't realize it went that far back. All right, so now we're, we're on our way out. And from here, from here on out, I'm not gonna run the video except for key points. But that's what we did. We did what's called a pass-through. Cutting through the base in route to Ankele City. We'll film it up here at the tunnel. It's kind of interesting. You're doing what back there, baby? You're doing distancing? Yeah. Well, Maria, you, you're watching Forrest G? Good job, sweetie. 
and Mama's just chilling as always, trying to figure out a way to go to sleep. Yes, yeah, sweetie. What you got, sweetie? Huh? Good job, Maria. You put your seatbelt on. Good job. Let's try to get a seatbelt on Forrest G. So folks, John Paul said the last time he came through this little strip, there was a bunch of monkeys right here alongside the road. Over where we live, uh, you know, Beretta over on that side, I've never seen a monkey up there. But if you go on SBMA up where the upper mile, back in that area, the, the housing area, there are monkeys everywhere. There are troops of 15, 20, 30 monkeys. Uh, they'll be on top of cars, trash cans. I mean, they're everywhere. But all, over on the Beretta, the Subic side, those mountains over there, I've never come in contact uh, with any monkeys over there. There you go, right there. There's a monkey right there. Yeah. Two monkeys. Look at there. Speak of the devil. Two monkeys. All right, folks. Let's see if we can spot some monkeys here. Okay. All right, he's going to try to get a close-up on the monkeys. I'm going to try to make sure they don't try to steal my... There, are right there. Yeah, keep easing back. Oh, there's a monkey in the tree. There's a monkey right here. See the monkeys, babies? Oh, that's a big monkey. Folks, there are monkeys all in that bamboo. I don't know if you can see them. Let me try to zoom in. There is a whole troop of monkeys. Look at look at how big that bit man. They're all they're all in here, man. There's probably 30 of them. They're they're all in that bamboo. See one right over there on the bamboo. And, and those those monkeys are very well fed. Those are healthy looking monkeys. My goodness, I don't know what they're eating. They must have plenty of bananas down in there because those are some healthy monkeys. See the monkey? See the little baby? There's a little baby monkey right there. Oh, he's hanging on his mama now. So cool, folks. So cool. And these are truly wild monkeys. You know, you go to Thailand and places like that where the monkeys are used to eating uh, ice cream cones and stealing sunglasses and all that. That's a different experience than seeing these monkeys here in the wild. These monkeys probably have very limited contact with humans. They're certainly not used to stealing ice cream cones and stuff like that. Awesome. Just look at the size of that bamboo there. Let me, let me go back out to, to normal size here. Look at that bamboo. See all the shade that the bamboo provides and, the, and the, how big those stalks are? Folks, that one stick of that bamboo over there is probably, I don't want to say a foot in diameter, but it's at least nine inches in diameter. Okay, buddy, thanks for stopping, man. Thanks for showing the kids the monkeys. Awesome. So, folks, I don't know if the iPhone is going to do it any justice. If I'd have had the big camera out, I could have zoomed in on them. But, yeah, they are, they are all over here. Okay, coming through the tunnel. Now, tell us why you hit the horn. Why do you hit the horn, John Paul? Why I hit the horn of the car. Yeah. Like that, sir. Right. Respect to the owner of this uh, mountain. Okay. So re Th re respect right. to the owner of the mountain. Yes, sir. Now, who is the owner of the mountain? Uh, maybe the... Is it the ghost? Uh, maybe like that, sir. Okay. It's either the ghost or is it Aswan? <laughs> maybe, sir. Maybe. maybe. When you come through that tunnel, you got to get a toot toot, give them some respect. We don't know who's there. Because like you don't know who's there. in there. Yeah, it could be a ghost, could be an Oswong. Oswong? What about a Shokoi? Uh, no, Shokoi no, in the, the, no, the water only. No, a Shokoi is only in the water. Yes, sir. What about Aswan. the Capri? 
Capri in the mall. Let us Only know. in the tree. Yes, sir. Oh, or maybe he's in the tunnel. Yes, sir. All right, folks. Make sure you get a toot toot. Now, now do you have, if, if, if can you say, tab it, tab it, tab it, tab it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's right, you sir. Got, especially if you got to pee. If you got to pee in the woods or pee in that tunnel, you got to tab it, tab it, tab it, tab it, tab it, tab it before you pee. That's Bisaya. <laughs> well, that's what you told me I had to do, baby. Yeah, that's Bisaya. If you didn't catch that video, it was uh, me and uh, wife number one there and our guide. We went to, uh, what was it called, Teabag Falls? Honey? Yeah. Teabag Falls. I'll try to remember to put the link down in the description. If not, just uh, search Teabag. T-I-B-A-G Falls. And on the way to Teabag Falls, look at that view. Man, that is a beautiful view coming down this hill here. Those mountains off into the distance. Over here on top of this mountain, you got some type of tower up there. Some type of communications tower. Lookout, whatever. Just a beautiful view coming down through here. So anyhow, on that on that video, we were hiking at Teabag Falls, and it's a pre pretty good hike. Not many people go up there, which was pretty cool. Beautiful view, walking across the river multiple times, multiple streams. I had to pee. So they were ahead of me. I just stopped to pee. And then this girl right here turned around and got so mad at me. She got so mad and scared at the same time. It's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking a piss. What does it look like I'm doing? You can't piss there. You can't, you can't do that. I'm like, why? And she wouldn't tell me, and I finally figured out it had to do with some superstition. And what did you tell me, baby? What did I have to say before I pee in the woods? Huh? You Take your mask off, they can't hear you. Every time you put in the jungle or in the tree, you need to say tabi tabi po. Maybe you don't know that it's there, or somebody's there that you cannot see. Then after the, uh, the next day, you, you sick, they punish you. So, okay. So, if I don't say tabit 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 poo before I piss in the woods, the next day I could be sick. They're gonna make me sick because I pissed in the woods without asking permission. No, they, like for example, maybe it's there. They, they piss. They, they, you pee. You pee there. You you pee them. I mean, you pee them. Oh, so you're saying maybe I accidentally pissed yeah. on them because I yeah. can't see and them. Angry. Oh. Okay, so they're angry because I pissed on their head. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I can't see them, but they can like see me, right? That's why you said tabi tabi po. Baby. Okay, but let me ask you this. They can see me, right? Yeah. So if they see me pulling out my wang and go to pee, you don't think they wouldn't move out of the way? You're the one who adjusts. I'm the one that has to adjust? <laughs> okay, but if I'm sitting there lounging and some, some foreign dude whips out his yang and is going to take a big piss, I'm going to move. But he's not gonna move unless I say top it, top it, top it, poo. Why he? Why don't he respect me? Who's the one who have a power? Me, cause I'm the one pissing. <laughs> All right, folks, coming up on the toll booth here. What you do? Pull a ticket. He's gonna pull a ticket there, and then we gotta pay when we get off this thing. I forget how much it is. <laughs> well, you gotta, gotta get it up there. Oh, it's way up there. What'd you do? Hit the truck button? Yes, sir. There's a button for the big truck? Yes. Sir. Oh, okay. He hit the one for the truck and it gave him the ticket way up high. I could barely reach it. Cleaning up that ditch. A little grass work. Man, what a weed eater. We got a lot of work to do because there's a lot of weeds coming up through here. Yeah, they, they get a lot of work on their hands. My goodness. Wow, I got weeds growing out the side of it, but I thought that was the objective. Maybe not. I guess weeds are not the objective. So that's a weed eating crew. Now Maria's wanting to do a little sleep. 
And she kicked her feet up on 4G. He said, nah, I ain't having none of that. <laughs> well, we got across there, Maria. Nice view, huh? Me and my Maria just chilling. She wanted to do my two log, but she would not do my two log back there. She wanted to do my two log right here. So I told her she could ride for a couple minutes and she got to get in the back seat. See the police, you gotta get in the back seat, sweetie. Oh, I know some of you are gonna crucify me. That baby's in the front, not wearing a seat belt. You know what, folks? I'm a product, I'm a child of the 70s, 80s. Ain't nobody wearing no damn seat belt back then. I'm still alive and I'm okay. I used to ride in the back of pickup trucks my whole childhood, riding in the back, riding sometimes riding on the tailgate at 60 mile an hour. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. All you young, skinny jean wearing Call of Duty, you know what I'm talking about. You don't know about that. My generation, just a different generation, folks. I'm a pirate looking at 50, and I ain't changing for nobody. Don't care what you say. Folks, got a little fire off to the starboard side of the aircraft. We got flame and smoke. Smoke and flame, what's going on? Oh, no, I'm burning this... Uh, grass right there. All right, okay. Chicken houses off to the right side of the aircraft. I don't know if I caught them. And then some type of mill. I don't know if this mill is still under or in operation or if it's an old, it looks like it probably still is. Some type of mill. Coming into the beautiful Ankele City. Roll the window down so you can get a good view of Koreatown up here. That's the Jollibee right here through the trees. The Jollibee and the Burger King at Koreatown. And I know you can barely see through, see through them trees, but I'll narrate. There's the pure gold. Coming up, there's the old iguanas, but the iguanas Mexican restaurant has moved to a new location. Uh, back on down the street back there at Koreatown. And there you go right there. Looking at the Clarkton Hotel. A rising tower. Where we used to stay. What are we on, baby? The 8th floor? I think we're on the 8th floor where we used to stay back in the day. Beautiful property with a rooftop swimming pool. How can you beat that? All right, getting off exit 149er, Clark South. Going shields up, shields down. All right, and you got to pay the toll here. So we're going to find out how much the toll is going that route, you know, through SBMA, then hitting the toll booth back there. How much does it cost? Now, is it a different price, John Paul, because we're in a big van? It's a higher price than a car? No, sir. Same. Same price as the car. All right, we're in a full-size Toyota van, so it's the same price. What are we? We're a Class 1 vehicle. And our origin. What was our origin, man? Type of vehicle. Yeah, we're a Class 1, right? But what's our origin? Origin is place. Very from. Yeah, yeah, but which one is that? Poor Rock, Floor, Tipo, Tebow. Okay, Tipo. So we we got on a Tipo. So our fare is 222 pesos. Okay, folks, that's roughly less than five bucks. Five bucks, and we'll come up here and pay the toll. And my goodness, Maganda. Wow, what a beautiful girl working the toll booth. My goodness. And 
obviously she's wearing a, uh, a face mask. But you can tell it in the eyes. How can we go on some faces? <laughs> wow. Thank you. Beautiful Maganda girl working uh, the toll booth, folks. I know that's uh, stating the obvious because pretty much everywhere you go here in the Philippines, nothing but beautiful ladies. Now, Fatima, don't get jealous. It's okay. It's okay to be curious, but don't get too serious and don't get jealous. Yeah, you're beautiful, baby. All right, folks, coming in here. Oh, no. Okay, Check. folks, successfully navigated the checkpoint. And coming on to Clark. The medical city Clark off to the starboard side of the aircraft. at Medical Center. Oh, nice entrance there. Motorbike parking. Plenty of motorbikes. I've told the story many times before, but when I first moved to Thailand, went to the mall, multiple floors of motorbike parking, and I forgot to remember which floor I parked my motorbike on. So out of thousands and thousands of motorbikes, I got to explore every floor of the parking garage until I found my motorbike. And I never made that mistake again about forgetting where I parked my motorbike. It's not as bad here, but in Thailand, you know, there's 10 times of motorbikes. You just have to make darn sure you remember where you parked your bike. All right, you got Yokohama Tire Company. Philippines off to the starboard side. Company called, what is that, SRCI? Semi Recycling Company Incorporated. Oh, yeah, Mercedes Benz here. So give your daddy back his Mercedes Benz. There's a DHL spot right there. I don't know if that's just their warehouse or if you can conduct business. Looks like a retail spot if you're trying to send something DHL. Looks like right there underneath the sign you can go in there. All right, a Mercedes Benz building. And the main gate. Be cutting the left hand turn. And off in the distance, I used to stay there at that red planet back when it was the tomb, but look at that faded out paint. You mean to tell me y'all can't even get a bucket of red paint and paint the red accents? I mean, that just tells me right there that the maintenance on that building ain't being kept up. I mean, I'm making the assumption that the darn thing is open. I don't even know if it's open. But back in the day, before it rebranded to Red Planet, it was called the Tune Hotel. They were brand new, little cheap hotels, tiny, tiny rooms. Like I said on a previous bit video, it's, it's a good room, but it ain't big enough to swing a dead cat in. It's just a place to sleep, shower, never had any problems with security. Those used to be my go-to spots, but when you see paint like that, it tells you something. I mean, just don't get a good warm and fuzzy that uh, it, it's brand new like it used to be when you can't even paint the red accents. Enough of that. Okay, we're holding here at M.A. Roxas Highway with some uh, construction going on. This building here.
All right, coming up on CFZ Gate Control Facility. Uh, coming up on the popo, everybody get right. Everybody shields up, shields down. Put the camera down for a second. Y'all can take a look at my blue suede shoes. But uh-uh, don't you step on my cowboy boots. All right, everything's good. Back to shooting out the starboard side of the aircraft, this monstrosity of a construction project of what this is going to be, I have no idea. It's the never-ending construction project here in Ankali City. Like I said, I always like to play the game, spot the construction worker, but there ain't many. I think they've broken a record for the longest-running still unfinished construction project in the history of construction. Here's a Honda place, ABC Hotel, off in the background, the Devera Hotel, the Jeepney Terminal. It's the back side of the Jeepney Terminal, which right over there is Margarita Station. That's where the Jeepneys pull in. This is Clark. Uh, how do you say that, man? Mabalakot, Angeles Road, and M.A. Roxas Highway. And I didn't get it, but to the left side is the uh, the SM. SM Clark. But I'm looking over here. Wow, beautiful Maganda lady in the lime green dress waiting on a ride. All right, Royal British Clark Dental Center is also one in the ground floor of the Horizon Tower. Chow King, the Jolly Bee. Remember for years you had to cut through that Jolly Bee parking lot until they fixed it. Anybody who hadn't been here in several years, now you don't got to cut through that Jolly Bee. There's the Popo Station in the park that nobody can enjoy. The only people that can enjoy this park is the trees. There's the beginning of Walking Street. You're looking at uh, Envy, Club Atlantis, and now that's the back alley where the bikini spot is. Did you get the bikini? Nah, Kuya Eric got your bikinis, baby. I got to go order you some more. No bikinis for you? I got to get you a tea bag. All right, there's that thing. Believe it or not, still tells the time. I don't know if it's right or not, but it's still telling the time. We're going there. Oh, the salon is there. We're not going to the salon. I told you the one that I need. Baby, I'm not, I didn't come over here to go to the salon. I'm handling some business, all right? I'm not saying I'm going to the salon. I just said where I go. Yeah, cut her right right here. Well, folks, if you're looking for the bikini lady, she's right down here. Down this little alleyway up here on the left. Buddy my all you doing is scoping out that canteen. I saw you looking over there. You went from salon to canteen. Okay, you want to talk about my luck, right? Okay, so I go to this place here. I'm trying to get a PCR test for my little girl. Uh, sir, you got a doctor's request? Doctor's request for what? Uh, if the child is under 12 years old, you have to have a doctor's request to get the PCR test done. <laughs> Red Cross Lab did its dirty. Now this place won't do it. You know what's funny is like I've heard, some certain hospitals you can't get in unless you have a negative PCR test. Now this place is saying you gotta have a doctor's note to be able to get a PCR test. Doctor's order. So we're going to go to the next place, and I'm going to tell you this right now. If this next place, which I think they will, I have, my other spot is straight. But if they give me any problems, that's the end of trying to get her a PCR test. This dude ain't doing one more mother... I'm not doing one more thing. All right, folks, so now we're headed over by... Uh, wow. Wow, my but, Fatima, don't get jealous. Lady in the yellow car and the orange dress. My goodness. 
Just don't, just don't get jealous, okay? Yeah, you got a violet T-shirt, but she had an orange dress. Yeah, thanks to uh, our friends in the states. Yeah. Shout out to our friends John and Maria. They sent that in the uh, Blick Buyam box, and she's right. It's a very expensive shirt, and she loves wearing it. That's why she's not jealous of the lady in the orange dress because her shirt costs more than that orange dress. Okay, folks, so coming out of the little side street here where the bikini lady is located, shout out to LB. Hope your business is doing well. Shout out to Eric for picking up them bikinis because I left out and forgot to get them. And uh, Eric will have to tell you, he said he was going to give them to uh, some folks in the States custom bikinis from the Philippines so I got to order some more world famous walking street and the McDonald's next door to Phil's Plaza Hotel and we are rolling loose on the streets of Angeles City young man sitting over there selling grinding helmets converge here in Angeles City is always crowded my goodness I'll never complain about the one in uh, Longapo again after seeing the lines here. Uh, Converge is the internet service I have. I highly recommend it. It's fiber. They've always done me right. Anytime an outage, they, they've addressed it and fixed it in a timely manner. But with that said, if you're going to get Converge here in Angeles City, understand you better get there when they first open and be the first hog at the trough or you're going to be standing in line because it's just always busy. You can pay your bill online, there's multiple ways to pay it, but if you have to go in there and establish service or get new service, I recommend you're the first person at the door in the morning and just save yourself the trouble of waiting for that line. Big line at that security bank. Cactus Jack, Smokehouse, Ribs, Steak, and Seafood. Oh, wow, beautiful lady over there standing in line. Fatty Mine's getting jealous. She's not jealous of these ladies because her t-shirt costs more than their dresses. She knows. She said she knows all them dresses are only uh, 200 pesos over at Apo Market. Her shirt came from the States. I got the trike loaded down with recyclables here. That dude can't see, but he's rolling strong. Cootie's hanging out over there, chilling. Little blow up dolphins for the kids for sale, and Hello Kitties. Robinson's here, off to the starboard side of this here aircraft. See what's happening. Gentleman trying to get his ride started. Trying to get his, trying to whip that whip. There you go, he got it started. He got it started. Racer took us down on the inside. Headed towards Hensonville. All right, folks, got to deploy this here grinding helmet, but it's come apart in my bag. Maybe if I wear it like that, they won't notice. But you got to put this over your face because, according to somebody here, that's going to save me. Touch it. Baby, you gotta put this together. I'm too damn old and I can't see. Put that crap together for me, please. Gracias por sus hospitalidad. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, let's go. I tell you, I, I keep everything real here, so I tell you what, what's happening. 
All right. Now this is my go-to spot, right? I came here a few days ago and I paid Bing. That's what I paid. I come here today, hey, I need a PCR test from a little girl, 7,200. You can't make this shit up. I'm like, come on, man. You guys have done me right on previous occasions. Seven, two? Wait, what, what the hell, it went up? Uh, 2,000 and something pesos over a couple days. Come on, man. So through a little bit of negotiation, I got the price back down. I think five, seven, whatever it is. Boom, there's the price. So now I'm just waiting our turn. At least they didn't tell me they had to have a doctor's order. So back to the other place, if I had to go get a doctor's order, it's 500 for the doctor's visit. Usually if they do some paperwork, they're gonna charge you a little bit extra. So 10, 20 bucks extra, plus the trip over there if the guy's got an appointment today. You see why I'm frustrated? This shit will never, it'll never fucking end over here. All right, I better stop talking if I wanna keep the video family friendly. So we're waiting, we're waiting to get her swab test done. Did I mention, did I mention, mention I've been on the wagon for what, what, a week now? A week and a half, I don't know how long it's been. I hadn't had a drop of liquor, week, week and a half, and you know, I just quit cold turkey whenever I want to. But it's times like this that makes doing business here in this country much more um, tolerable, much more just, okay, no problem, is when you come to a place and you've had three, four, five beers, it's easier just to go with the flow. But when you're sober, it is frustrating doing business here. And that's every day. That's not just a situation. I'm not picking on this situation. If you come and move to the Philippines, you better bring an ass load of patience. Or you better drink six beers before you go anywhere to do business and prepare to either wait for an hour or two hours or for that person you're meeting to be one hour or two hour late then you won't get upset huh? yep you gotta be a good girl when the kuya comes to take your sample okay mama got some candy for you last time she did real well she didn't do anything she didn't she just nope no problem but she's more awake this time so we're gonna see what happens Start remember we did it before, Maria, remember? Be good girl, sweetie. Okay. Uh, say ah for me. Can you open your mouth? Ah, say ah. Say ah. Alright folks, we're clear of my spot. And I want to give a shout out to my man who does the testing. The gentleman who does the testing. A nice young man. Same guy who did my swab results or uh, did my swab test, just very, um, I don't know how to say it, you know, the, in, in America you say the doctor has a bedside manner, you know. Anyhow, just real kind with uh, my daughter and actually talked her into doing exactly what she needed to do. And, and shout out to that young man, you know. Uh, she didn't whimper, she didn't cry, she just, uh, I mean, obviously discomfort when it went up her nose, but Anyhow, his, his, he, he was just good with children. Just uh, thank you very much, man, for taking care of that. All right, rolling through, I don't know the name of this street here, Sitio Abacan. It's the back way into Hensonville from the uh, Robinsons over there. Y'all have seen me walk this same piece of ground several times in previous videos. There's a nice birthing home clinic. Like I said, here in the Philippines, that's a great place to meet single mothers. Hang out at the birthing clinic. Plenty of single moms coming through there. You know, you might think that's cruel, but, uh, you know, pregnant girl in six months, she's just a single mom. After the kid's six months old, so what's the matter? 
Go over there and hang out at the birthing clinic. Find you a good lady. Coming through Malabanas and John Paul, if you'll just keep straight, my friend. Yes, sir. Yeah. Malabanas. Sitio Saudi. Saudi Arabia. A place that nobody wants to be. Folks, hope the how's the stabilization doing on the iPhone 12 Mini? It's pretty good. I know the iPhone 13 is out. Obviously, every iteration of the iPhone or any phone gets better and better, but the iPhone 12 Mini is a champion. Should I upgrade to the 12 or excuse me to the 13 Pro Max? It's a possibility. If I upgrade, that means the wife number one will get the 12 Mini with the pink case which she's been eyeing ever since I got it. Oh, I know I'm a horrible person for not buying her a brand new phone, but guess how a lot of these videos are made? They're made on this device that I'm holding, so it makes sense for the guy making the video to have the latest and greatest technology so you guys can have the smoothest, most wonderful view over the new Malabanas Bridge. Anyhow, if I pick up that 13 Pro Max, I will hand this over to uh, Fatima, wife number one. Jump it down in there. Of course, the concrete. And Baby, you want this iPhone 12 mini or should I give this to your sister? That's yours? I didn't say you could give the 8 plus to your sister. What about Atty Mai Mai? <laughs> okay, California Lounge. Now, I was talking to a young lady last week in Barreto who used to work right here. It's the Don't Tell Mama Bar. KTV and it says it's for sale obviously looks like it's well I don't want to speak it some bitch might open up at night but appears to be out of business or going out of business but anyhow beautiful young lady over in uh, Barrio Brito that used to work there at the Don't Tell Mama Bar She asked me if it was still open. I said, I don't know, because I only walk by there during the day and it's closed. I told her I'd have to walk, go by there at night and let her know. Red Suite Hotel, over here to the left side of the aircraft. Well, no, it's closed. Oh, well, Day High Store, I, I, it's closed today. Maybe it's open, but she's closed right now. Day High Store, great place to eat oh, Filipino no. food over there. Okay, my friend. Now just take a left here. We're gonna make one stop up here, and then we'll go back the other way. I uh, just yeah, just left up here. Yeah. Puzzles Cafe off to the left side of the aircraft, and I'm gonna sit back, let my man look at his mirror here, so I'm not obstructing any of his view. And Maria saying, "Vinda, vinda, vinda!" Got the watermelons. Okay, Highway 54 bar. Steel man, drill shack. I have to come by here tonight, folks. Figure out which one of these are open, which one are closed. Ice bar, blue sapphire, platinum, legends. Still got this construction mess going on. You want to use car, it's like an impromptu used car lot right there, apparently. 
There's Bretto's Deli and Meat Shop. Coming up here on uh, Honey Cove, a few ladies out there. There's a Red Planet, used to be the tune back in the day. Yeah, make more noise, babies. It's too quiet in here. All right, we're going to stop right by here. Horizon Tower. You see this white building, my friend? Yes, yeah, just pull in there, man. Stop and see some friends over here. Yeah, the big tall one right there, buddy. Hey, yeah, folks, this is Horizon Tower. We used to stay here up on the eighth floor. Well, I've stayed in two different units, but awesome condo, rooftop pool, great view of the airport. All right, folks, so uh, checked out Horizon Tower 1. If anybody's looking for a unit, they got a unit on the third floor. Um, only thing on the third floor, there's no view. That's the bad news. No view from the third floor because it's a wall instead of the, the wrought iron balcony. But the price is reduced and it's a one bedroom unit. Great building, beautiful uh, rooftop pool up there. Uh, wonderful staff. Uh, we love living there over there at Horizon back in the day. But one of the things that we loved about the place was the view and that particular unit uh, it doesn't have the view that we're used to Beautiful lady sitting there. Oh, three ladies out there. My goodness, don't get jealous, Fatima. There's beautiful ladies everywhere. Everywhere there's beautiful ladies. Just don't get jealous. And to the right side of the aircraft is the church. And you know what? I'm going to blatantly shoot because I'm going to blatantly film. Last time I come up here, a security guard tried to tell me not to film the church. Why would you be concerned about somebody filming a church? It's beyond me. But that's what the dude tried to tell me. Don't film the church. Like, dude, I'll go stand out on the street and I'll film you, your ugly mug. How about that? All right. Hotel Euro Asia and CPI call shop. I got to stop in here and try to craft beer. Used to hang out in there a lot. Beautiful ladies. Walking down the street. Who's that lady? So funny here in Achilles how people hide from the camera. Like your family don't know your ass is working in Angeles City. How can they not know you're working in Angeles City? Come on. When every Facebook post that you do, you're in Angeles City. You act like you don't want to be seen in Angeles City. My goodness. Just stop the madness. Be proud of who you are. I sure as hell am. All right, look down through yonder. Little corner salon right here. Young lady selling them face shields. This is the old freelance park that's gone through so many makeovers and changes and now it's just a, a park full of weeds. Nothing but weeds. Thousands of us have been looking through that chicken wire. Come down through here. Especially during the day. Dude, you filming during the day? People are scared to have their face seen during the day on a public street. My goodness. 
All right, buddy. Now go past this and take a right. Yeah, take a right, folks. World famous walking street, Philly sports bar over here to the right. Yeah, take a right right here, buddy. And looks like ain't nobody at Phillies. My goodness. Yeah, but one customer standing in there. And then take a left right here. Las Vegas. Got chains on the door. And come down here. And you'll keep straight till the end, my friend. And then take a right. Watch that big speed bump right there. It's a, it's a big one. Oh, a little spot here. Korean Mart used to have some tables out there, stools. Shout out to that gentleman. Okay, we got Tequila Reef. Off to the right side of this aircraft, one of my favorite spots to eat. Y'all ain't already figured that out. There you go. That's my spot right there. Got a beautiful lady walking up the stairs. That is my perch. Right there, Tequila Reef, one of my favorite places. And then take a left right here, John Paul. And what we're going to do is come down here to the scorebirds and see why Sapanin. Pacific Breeze off to the right side of the aircraft. That used to be our go to spot. When we first started coming to uh, Angeles City, we would always stay at Pacific Breeze. Um, uh, no, straight ahead, my brother. Stay straight ahead. I'm sorry. So Pacific Breeze used to be our spot. But we're going to go right here to the left, my friend, to this Scorebirds Hotel. Just where that white van is on the left. Oh. Folks, another favorite place is Scorebirds. I love this spot. I don't know what's going on. They're open. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. See what they got going on. This is the home of the bikini contest. Obviously, hadn't had a bikini contest since all this mess started. But I'm sure many of you listening to my voice. Park here, sir? Yeah, park right here, brother. Have been to this bikini contest. I think the last time I was here was in a damn Santa Claus suit. Live stream. So, folks, I keep an eye on a go to. Uh, you know, for various reasons, just to see what hotels are open, what the prices are. I mean, I look at different places around the globe. And I noticed, I guess a month or two ago, right? At, I guess right out a month ago, what the gentleman was saying, I saw Scorebirds drop off of Agoda. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And, you know, sometimes hotels only put so many rooms on Agoda or Booking.com, what, what have you. So I said, let me stop by and see what's going down. So we pull in, and the gentleman is like, sir, checking in. And I didn't recognize him at first because I wasn't paying attention. Finally, I recognized him, and he recognized me. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on, you know? Because, you know, we stayed here a long time, a few years back. And he said, no, uh, it's only a quarantine hotel for returning OFWs now. Um, so, you know, if you come from Dubai or wherever you're working, you know, OFW overseas Filipino workers when they come in they have to quarantine for so many days take so many tests whatever that protocol is well this hotel now is is serving strictly for that purpose so when they come in they come straight here they spend their 14 days and they can leave understandable understandable um, you know in these times whatever type of business you can get uh, so to totally understandable but I was gonna come over here and stay for a while maybe stay a few nights and hang out in the pool and just see what's going on great property but he said for about a month that's been going on and i said hey when are they going to stop doing that and he said no idea so there you go that's why you don't see scorebirds on uh on a go to or any of the booking sites if you do then it's well, it's obviously you got to be an OFW and uh, use it as a quarantine spot uh, there you go all right, folks, so there we go. So Scorebirds, again, great property once everything opens back up. Um, make this one of your potentials where you're going to stay. I know you can't see the pool, but check out previous videos. Beautiful property in there. And, you know, 
come to think of it, I haven't seen Pacific Breeze on there either. They may be doing the same thing. They may be doing the same thing, but don't hold me to it. I don't know that for a fact. There's the Penthouse Hotel. Okay, now this building here is part of Pacific Breeze here. But we'll keep going straight, and at the end of this street, John Paul, you're going to take a lift, my friend. Okay, Swiss Chalet and uh, Swiss Chalet Restaurant. Been a long time since I ate there. Eric and Mercy ate there not too long ago, said the food was outstanding. All right. What, baby? Which which bikini you like, honey? Hey, shout out to my friend right there. That lady in the orange friend of mine. Uh, Bourbon Street Apartments in the poker room over here to the left. Yep. That's the Wild Orchid to the left side of the aircraft. Wild Orchid over in uh, Beloit Beach. But where we're going, John Paul, we're going to this one building right here. One Euphoria. It's a new building here. I don't know exactly how long it's been open. But we're going to stop in and inquire. And see what's shaking here. Yeah, man, you can just let me out right, right anywhere in here, man. I don't know where the park. You know what? The park is right here. Okay, sir. Yeah, you can pull in here and park, man. Sweet, sir. I'm sure that they won't mind. There ain't even a guard in there. That's the parking area. And again, folks, it's a brand new building. Don't know much about it. I know there's a couple videos out there. I think uh, Philly did a video about the place. Don't hold me to that, but I think he did. One Euphoria. It's got a 7-Eleven down below. So we'll just park this here chariot in this beautiful gravel parking lot. And I'm going to go in and talk to these folks about this little spot. This place is nice in here. My goodness. So that's like the mock-up of the pool area up top. Little zero. It, or, no, I'm sorry, infinity pool. Beautiful. That's going to be a little bar area. A little sandwich breakfast shop area. Beautiful. Again, next door to 7-Eleven. Folks, check out this elevator here. My goodness, look at this house. There's a chandelier. There's a chandelier in the elevator. Man, my goodness. All right, folks, let's check out this pool area. Oh, look at that view. Man, I just fell in love yeah, with this place. Man, that is a beautiful view. All right, check this out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> folks, when you're videoing some... Sometimes, uh, oh, that's for the window washing. Yeah. Ah, okay. When you're a video and you're in your own little world, and so people have to get your attention. Look at this beautiful, absolutely beautiful property. I can see myself laid out right here. And that that's the weight room right here. Okay, so yeah, so that's the gym. Man, check this out. This is this is a beautiful view. Wow. Stunning. I mean, this this is something else. So right there is a wild orchid. And we were just at Scorebirds over there. There's Fields Hotel into Walking Street. Oh yeah, so you got this nice little sitting area down here too. Man, this is, this is some kind of awesome to sit up here, chill out in this pool. And I talked to the ladies. They said, hey, no problem with kids, no problem with visitors. You know, if you have any overnight guests, there's, you know, maybe issues with that, additional costs, what have you. 
but if, if a buddy wants to come up and have a drink with you or whatever, it's no problem. Some places I've talked to, they're not allowing any guests, like you check into a hotel. If the person is not with you at check-in, they don't come up because of this, uh, this Rona stuff. You don't got to worry about that here. Wow, check this out. And what's this, man? It's a hot tub or jacuzzi right here? Yeah, it's a big jacuzzi. I'm trying to figure out how many ladies can fit in here. Man, and I, the, the breeze coming through right now. Oh, man. Beautiful. This is going to be a restaurant dining room here. This is still for lease, right? Somebody wants to uh, try your hand at a restaurant. Oh, wow. Look at this view. You see, now we're looking over at the airport. And what I was talking about from Horizon Tower is we used to sit over there and watch all the airplanes fly. You know, the, the regular commercial traffic and the little flight school with the little Cessnas. It was, it was beautiful. Um, wow. What a nice panoramic view. So hopefully once this mess gets uh, cleared up, somebody's going to open up this restaurant here because this is stellar property. Look at that. A lot of attention to detail in this place here. All right, thank you very much, sir. Look at this corner here. Oh, and they can open up so the breeze comes through. Guess I should have realized that. Sit up here, hear the sounds of the city with the breeze. And that is a Central Park right there. Another beautiful rooftop view. Follow this gentleman in here. Invitation. Ah, okay. If you want to uh, birthday party. Yeah. You got a birthday party. Yeah. It's a vent room. Yeah. All right, folks. Here's a fitness gym. Everybody who's into this. Oh, this is pretty nice. Good, my nice size space here. Now, the only thing I would use in here is probably that bag, but that's me. You got everything, treadmill, weights. What's up, people? And plus, you get the view. You get the view while you walk, work out. TV's up there. So if you're into weights, this is it. Speed bag, too. It's the cloud bar? Yes, sir. Now this is all still for lease, right? We're waiting on somebody to lease it, open it up. Look at this, folks. Every, this is what we call a turnkey. I believe everything here is it's just turnkey. I think everything back there is installed. They just, you just need to come here with staff and uh, product, sign a lease, and open up. I could be wrong, but I would say that's a turnkey operation here at this bar. I guess the restaurant would be the same way. Holy moly. Imagine sitting here on this rail, looking out at Mount Riot, drinking a cold beer. And here you go. That's the clouds bar is what they're calling it. You got a screen up there. Obviously they still got some work going on inside. It's gonna be a beautiful fountain, appears to me. Candy Palace. I'm dealing with the iPhone, starting to overheat on me. Low battery. World's worst YouTuber. Not Steven Spielberg. There's Candy Palace. Looking at the SM. And it looks like we are higher than Central Park. What a nice place. But now. On to the next item up for bid on the prices right here. I love it. One Euphoria, Angeles City. I got a website. All right, let me just do a video here. Now, again, this space is for lease unless somebody's already, uh, well, no, there's the dugout. Looks like there's people in there. I don't know if somebody's leased that or not. But then you've got a 7 Eleven right here. That's open. 
but this place may be open. I don't know. That's a cool looking spot. But where we are, straight ahead is the famous walking street and my favorite restaurant up there, the Kila Reef. All right, folks. Hey, buddy. Shout out to that gentleman. How you doing, man? That dude's always out here. But man, I don't know if you can go through Walking Street or not. So maybe we just need to turn left and go around. Just take a left here. I don't know if we can go through Walking Street or not. All right, folks, so back out. Gonna try to hit a drive through. Just pick up some Mickey D's. Cause we're not sure what the policy is about bringing children in the restaurants here. Most of them don't allow it because of the whole Rona. down the alley here we'll get a fresh look at the bikini shop from a different perspective another, another big shout out to LB right here at the bikini shop right there get your bikinis Back around the bend, trying to get to McDo. There you go. Another look down the world famous Walker Street. Oh, watch that thing. It's a big combo burger. Big Mac, 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 this happens. At least a dozen. Okay. Okay. Coming through the drive through World famous McDonald's next to the Walker Street, folks. 900 something pesos, which is uh, 20 bucks. Nice parking area here at Station One. Wait on them French fries. Folks, before I forget, um, I didn't video the, the unit that I saw in um, One Euphoria. Just got to talking or what have you. Beautiful, beautiful unit. It's a one bedroom, awesome kitchen beautiful view of Mount Riot. If you're a, uh, a single dude or just you and your lady, it is perfect for you. The building is barely occupied right now. Obviously none of the restaurants are open yet, but all that will come in time. But uh, it's not conducive for me and my crew. I mean, just top-notch uh, furniture in there. It's like a white cloth type furniture. That's not conducive for, for me and my crew and my kids because I don't want to be spending a thousand bucks paying for somebody's uh, furniture. It's, uh, so it's not, it's not suitable for me and the kids. All right, it's just too nice. It's too upscale, too many things to break and too many things for me to pay for. However, if you are looking for an outstanding place and you're either single or just you and your lady, go into One Euphoria and uh, just ask them to hook you up. Well, I, I don't want to name no names because maybe they don't. Just just go in there and ask them if they have anything for rent and they'll hook you up direct with the owner. The owner has the key, so the owner will have to come uh, 
and let you in the unit. All right, folks, back underway. Anyhow, one Euphoria, outstanding building. Uh, beautiful views. It's brand new, upscale. Go over there and check it out. Ooh, look at that Lee Chum and Nook over there on the rack. I don't know if the iPhone's going to do that any justice or not. Here we are, back, made full circle. But we've been all over Angeles City today and went to a few more places. I didn't even think about pulling the camera out and getting on video. But we're going to head out of town now and have a picnic. A McDonald's picnic. Cut a little U-turn here. Flipped it around like a champion. There's the Azuro Hotel in the back of the Azuro is where the SRRB office. If you were looking for a retirement visa to retire over here, especially if you're a gringo, American, if you have, uh, if you're a former military, from what I understand now, all you gotta do is show them a DD-214. I don't know if that's true or not, but before you had to actually be stationed here in some form or fashion, but now I think as long as you're prior US military, there's a mechanism to process an SRRB pretty easily with uh, not a whole lot of money that you have to deposit it into a Philippine bank account. I'm not an expert on it, but if you're looking to eventually, if they ever open the airport up, if you're looking to retire over here, you might want to check into that. Just call the retirement office. I don't have the number, but they're, they're located in the Azuro Hotel if they're open. They're just doing online stuff. I, I don't know. If you're prior military, check into it. Maybe you can get that retirement visa. Man, folks, this is gonna be a long video. If you like SBMA and Angeli City, this is the video for you. If you don't, then maybe you want to wait for the next one. Because this is a marathon Angeli City immersion video. Two for 109. Extra long Chicken Juniors of Burger King. That sounds delicious, even though I've got McDonald's here in the vehicle with me. I love a Big Mac, but if I had a choice, I'm a Burger King player. tree got some folks sleeping over there living in the park like I said folks it'll break your heart but it's life here and they're cooking some rice right there All right, folks, on our way out. And off to the starboard side of the aircraft. You see the U.S. flag flying out there. That's Clark Veterans Cemetery. All right, head about, head it out. 
we sort of got mission accomplished. I still got one more thing I got to do. We roll back through a long pole. Hopefully, I can try to knock that out. It'd be a day of progress. Got a building going up out there. Not sure what that's going to be. Condo building, office building, who knows? Right here, Fifth Avenue. There's the beautiful Mount Riot. The views that we just saw from that new condo building. The gentleman working a weed eater over there. He needs my grinding helmet. All right, folks, a so left turn on to Udena, Udena Avenue. There's a gas station right here that we stopped at before. There's plenty of parking, plenty of shade trees. Just pick one of these trees here, uh, John Paul, and let's have a picnic out there, my friend. Yeah, right over there is a swing. Go to, go to the one with the tire swing, the far, far tree over there. It's allowed because I said it's allowed. I'm the king. Yeah, where's your gun? You're not allowed, sir. Yeah, right here. Uh, we can walk. It's not allowed. We can walk, but we can't drive. So you park right here. Just park right here. We'll walk right there, unless there's no tables. All right, right there. There's a picnic table right there, my friend. Yeah. Right there. That's even better. Look at this, folks. Perfect picnic area right here at Artillery Park. It's the Artillery Memorial. Right there. We asked for our uh, security guard. Yellow, that's asking. Hello, sir. Sir, can you come in? We can eat food. Can you come in? It's not, the, it's not his fault, you know. I'm not mad at him. And the gentleman even said, you know, thank you for understanding. I, it's hard not to just be like, are you fucking kidding me? But it's not his fault. The guy's just following rules, you know. He's trying to make a living like everybody else. Like every street cop trying to make a living and forcing these fucked up rules from people sitting in ivory palaces. It's ridiculous. Uh, can't have a picnic on a, on a damn concrete picnic table. Why? You tell me. You, you tell me. Absolute, just absolute insanity. So we're, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pull off on the side of the damn road down here somewhere and have a picnic on the side of the road, eat our McDonald's. What? Force G's already got the picnic going? And Maria, I think she already drank some Coke, so they, the kids already got the picnic going. Let's come up here, take this ticket. They roll through and then look for a spot to do a picnic. Folks, this is the Omni Flight School over here. When we were living at Horizon, those little planes were taking off. It was just so fun to watch. We were like watching RC planes fly all day. I sit out there, drink my beer, watch the planes fly. And then over here at Clark, you see the big planes taking off. And a look at Clark through the trees building with a million air cons on the back of it <laughs> look at how many air cons on the back of that building my goodness you got ants on a piece of cake and folks they got a they got a dummy here holding up a sign that says slow down <laughs> they got one on the other side too that dude works for free 24 hours a day seven days a week never complains don't want a pitching he don't ask for overtime he just stands out there holding that sign like a champion. These folks here working on the roadway. Ooh, doing some asphalt as we speak. All right, folks, we found a little place to pull over here. Just got CRs over there. Uh, it's just right here off the side of the highway. Fortunately, our picnic, I got two babies asleep. That's not stopping Fatima from having a picnic. She ain't, she's been chowing down on french fries since we left Angeles City, but now she's going down to Burger Baby. So folks, been a, 
an interesting day. Guess we got our business handle. Had a little adventure. Obviously got a lot of footage to go back and uh, chop up. Right now, I'm gonna go to town on this here Big Mac. Ooh, look at that little swamp buggy. Little overlanding vehicle. Oh yeah, look at there. That Big Mac down the hatch. Folks, got a really nice CR here. Proper toilet with an ass sprayer. Got a poop fan and a damn air con going. My goodness. Look at this. Got a hand blower, two pissers. It's like plenty of water out there. Uh, ain't no toilet paper, but you know what? I ain't getting greedy. What's up, people? Taking a 10 100. All right, time to mount up this chariot. Oh, there goes one right there. She's on. Oh, right there. Now, my line every time you go through a toll, toll booth, there are beautiful Philippines working here. Every time. Fatima, don't get jealous. Every time, my goodness. If you really want to meet a beautiful Filipina with a job, you just keep going through the toll booth. Just keep making loops. You bring some flowers and some jelly bee. That girl was absolutely stunning. All right, let's pull up here and see what we got going down. All right, let's see get this. How much was it? One fifty one. One fifty one on that. See, all friendly and beautiful. Oh my goodness. There's a little EMS station right there. Amulets right there. Radio tower. I asked John Paul if he needed some money for uh for the fuel. And he said no, he's got it. And then I asked, and then I looked back and this one said, I need money. I said, what are you talking about? Look at this. These two kids are racked out back there. Chilling like villains. Alright, pull into the full service station. All the gas stations here in the Philippines are full service. You can't pump your own gas if you try. Okay, folks, this is one of the markers. And we've talked about taking this route and stopping and reading all these markers, but that's one of the markers right there for the Bataan Death March. And I can't read what kilometer that is, but basically they have mile markers, kilometer markers from where it started down in Maravellas all the way to San Fernando where they put the prisoners on the trains and then bust them up uh, to Tarlac. It's funny what rain does to psychology, right? To your, your mood, your state of mind, what you think about. It goes back to the basic hierarchy of needs. You can be sitting there thinking about your light bill or think about this or buying this. You let it start coming a good hard rain, it takes you way down on the basic hierarchy of needs to just what? Stay dry. All of a sudden, you ain't worried about that light bill. Oh, we in a, we in a little downpour now. A little downpour and a downhill slope. On a 911 slope. All right, now what I wanted to do it's going to be kind of mixed match footage because this timeline is a 4K 60 frame timeline. And my big Sony camera, what I'm shooting on now, it only goes to uh, 4K 30. 
So right now I'm shooting 4K 30 footage. Uh, oh yeah, got a jet over there. Welcome to a long opposed city. Home of the most beautiful women in the world. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what the sign says. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Thank you, man, for stopping and letting me film that. I don't know how long that sign's been up, but maybe some of y'all can weigh in and tell us. Uh, but anyhow, on the iPhone, I was shooting 4K 60. All the settings are automatic. Just, uh, apparently got a variable bit rate. Most cell phones do, I guess. But now I'm on the big Sony camera, 4K 30 at 100 megabits per second. Uh, zero on the gain, 60 on the shutter speed. And it goes down to F 2.8, so I'm down at the lowest it'll go. On the F-stop or whatever, the aperture. So I just want you to see the difference in a big proper camera versus a cell phone with the low light the rain. Now the iPhone is probably going to beat this thing. Well, I don't know, 100%, possibly, maybe, going to beat this thing with uh, stabilization. But when the low light goes, you know, when, when the light goes down, the stabilization on a phone or a GoPro, it just goes to crap. So maybe this thing is more stable uh, because of the low light. And I basically got it on a tripod resting on my knee. So everything my knee feels, this thing's getting bumped around too. But I just thought I'd do a quick comparison. You know, I've been shooting on the iPhone all day. It's so easy to shoot on your phone. Especially have, when you have one of these remote shutter buttons. You know, I hang it around my neck like a necklace. So I don't even have to touch the phone. I just hit the button, hang it around my neck. The thing goes to work. For the most part, your phone is the easiest way to run a YouTube channel. But there's a couple limitations. Number one, low light. Uh, never going to beat a proper camera because of the sensor size. And number two is the audio. Number two is the audio. If somebody would take a cell phone and figure out how to get the same audio that you can get on a proper camera with proper microphone preamps whatever their uh, camera manufacturers probably go out of business I mean the iPhone is good enough for most people but there's a huge difference on the small cameras with the audio that's that's just the big problem at least for me I mean, I'm only using a Rode Video Micro right now but I'm 100% certain that the audio is louder, clearer, less to no wind noise versus when I was shooting on the iPhone. Whether I was using the onboard microphone or the headset. This is the place where I come from, sir. This where you from? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So, folks, we're rolling through John Paul's hometown right here. And tell us the name of this area, my friend. This is the Calapati, New Cabalan. New Cabalan? Along the post city. Okay, so New Cabalan, along the post city. Yeah. John Paul's hometown up here. Now, are we on the top of the mountain right now? Yes, sir. So we're at the top right now. That, uh, that Calapati Monument, sir. Where's that? Calapati Monument. Calapati? Monument. Monument? Yes, okay. Yes. So right there with the with the uh, dove on top. That's a monument here. There you go. New Alright, cool man. Now folks talk about my microphone. If you hear that snoring in the back, is that Maria? That's Maria. So Maria's doing the snore. Now we're on the downhill slope.
Anyhow, folks, enough about the camera situation, but just tell me what you think. Big Sony cam versus the iPhone footage. The other thing, too, today it got so hot that the iPhone 12 mini did another overheat. Now, number one, it's hot as heck. Number two, I was standing out in the hot sun. Number three, I'm shooting, you know, probably an hour of 4K 60 frame footage before the thing does an overheat. But as much footage as I shoot, the 12 will overheat. And that's what makes me want to jump to the, thir the 13 Pro Max to see if I can eliminate or limit that overheating. Hey, I shoot a lot of footage. It don't all make it to the video, but I, I like to, I shoot a lot of footage. I pick and choose. You, when you get back, you sit down in front of a computer, you cannot recreate your day. You can all, you know, if you shoot eight hours of footage, you can always chop that down to 10 minutes. You know, throw away the rest of it. But you can't recreate anything. So I always shoot way too much footage, chop it down. Maybe it takes me a little bit longer to edit and look through it. But if you're not rolling and something happens, you can't recreate that incident. This camera here has got a one inch sensor on it. It's a Sony FDR AX100 camcorder, but it's a champion. Yeah. I wish I had a full frame Sony FX3 or A7S3, but that'll come in time. But right now, this old Sony camcorder with a one inch sensor, it's a champion that does the trick. And it ain't never overheated on me, no matter how long I recorded with this thing. It just don't overheat. You know, it's big, I guess the electronics in there, they're not cramped plenty of room to breathe so to speak dissipate heat this thing when you hit the button it, it you know what it does it goes to work that's what you need in a camera everything else aside if that thing don't go to work when you push the button it's a useless camera that's why I don't deal with GoPro anymore GoPro is just notoriously unreliable so when you push the button you don't know if you're recording or not you don't know if you're gonna get that footage or not it's a 50-50 roll of the dice. You can't you can't buy that camera. It's just not for me. It's not reliable. That is a killer truck. Right here. Yes, sir. Somebody died in there. Yeah. Oh Lord. Rest their soul. Put a little zoom on it, see if we can't cut out the hood of the vehicle. 